Most airfields I visit have either a concrete or a grass runway, and some have both. I prefer grass in the summer and a hard runway in the winter. They all vary in terms of length and width, and some have lovely smooth surfaces, and some can be really rough. The UK winters and springs can get pretty wet, which forces many grass strips to close for the season. However, some have come up with some novel ideas to enable year-round operation, like astroturfs and meshes in the grass. This time on Shortfield, I visit Darley Moor Airfield in Derbyshire to meet a friend and a fellow YouTuber, and with their grass runway flooded and out of commission, I get to check out their narrow winter hybrid runway for the very first time. Oh, is this even a runway? Right, aircraft's checked. Let's go. Northfield Radio, good morning. Golf Oscar Oscar Papa Yankee. Golf Oscar Oscar Papa Yankee, good morning. Pass your message. Golf Oscar Oscar Papa Yankee, Sport Cruiser, one on board for Darley Moor and uh, Hangar 6 airfield information, please. Golf, Golf Papa Yankee, 02, left hand circuit, QNH 1016. 02, left hand and 1016, set. Golf Papa Yankee. 02 left hand circuit QNH 1016 QNH 1016 02 So our route today is going to take us uh, out of North Wheeled, northerly, immediate turn left Hang around for Roger And then into, well we're in the TMZ anyway, into the transponder mandatory zone And we'll go through that at uh, about 1200 feet That base today looks like around 2500, something like that With a Westerly wind by the looks of it. And then turn northwesterly at Ware, the VRP at Ware. And then continue up towards the East Midlands International Airport. And from that point, we will uh, hopefully get a zone crossing and direct to Darling Moor. Should take about an hour and 15 minutes. Got a bit of a headwind. But, uh, yeah, I'll speak to you in the end. Revs are okay, T's and P's are okay. SB's alive. Which uh, seven, I've got one on the roll climbing out. When you're ready, surface wind 300 at 10. We'll do a seven. That bird was pretty close, wasn't it? Flaps over speed. So, as we climb out of North Weald and head west and leave the circuit, we enter London Stansted's TMZ or Transponder Mandatory Zone. TMZs are an airspace designation that requires aircraft to have an operational transponder in order to enter and operate within that particular airspace. Transponders are electronic devices that transmit an aircraft's identification, altitude and other information to air traffic control or ATC radar systems. TMZs are typically established in areas where there is a high volume of air traffic or where there is a need for enhanced surveillance and identification. They are often found around busy airports, military installations or areas of sensitive airspace. The one I'm passing through is directly below the final approach for London Stansted's runway 04, less than 7 nautical miles away. The purpose of requiring transponders in these zones is to improve air traffic management and enhance situational awareness for air traffic controllers. By having aircraft equipped with transponders, ATC can more accurately track and identify aircraft within the TMZ, which helps in maintaining separation between aircraft and provides a higher level of safety. You are not in controlled airspace and you are not under any kind of control. However, it is important to fly accurately and ensure you keep a good margin between you and the controlled airspace above and around you. I like to tune my radio into the approach frequency and set the listening squawk of 7013 so that the controller can contact me if need be. Failure to comply with transponder requirements within a TMZ may result in restrictions or denial of entry into that airspace. It's important to note that specific regulations and requirements for TMZs may vary between countries and aviation authorities, so it's crucial for pilots to familiarise themselves with the applicable rules and procedures for the region they are operating in. 
As I leave the messy airspace around London and settle into the cruise portion of the flight, the thick cloud, although broken, doesn't allow me to climb above safely, so I maintain 2,500 feet for the time being. There's not much going on now until I reach East Midlands airspace some 18 nautical miles away, so now will be a good time to tell you all about our destination. Set in an idyllic location a few miles to the south of Ashbourne in Derbyshire and only 30 miles south of the famous Lady Bower Dam, the former Royal Air Force Base of RAF Darley Moor was constructed in 1942 and hosted various RAF squadrons during World War II. After the war, the airfield was returned to civilian use and is now home to a small motor racing circuit and the little airfield of Darley Moor. Darley Moor hosts the base for a microlite maintenance organisation and microlite training school. It sits at 580 feet above mean sea level and lists a grass runway which is not normally available during the winter. However, they also have a hard runway at 650 metres long, orientated 0119. The runway is listed as concrete and was part of the original RAF main runway. However, to stop the old runway deteriorating, they have ingeniously covered the old surface with AstroTurf, making it more of a sort of like a hybrid runway, a little bit soft and a little bit hard. Okay, back to the aircraft, and I'm making good progress with just five minutes to go to the controlled airspace at East Midlands. So I call them up for a transit. East Midlands radar, good uh, afternoon. Golf Oscar, Oscar Papa Yankee for a zone crossing basic service. Golf Oscar. Oscar Papa Yankee, with that party message. Golf Oscar Oscar Papa Yankee is a sport cruiser from Northfield en route to uh, Darley Moor. Currently just to the uh, east of Leicester at 2,800 feet on 1016. Um, requesting uh, zone entry and crossing via uh, Lima Echo Sierra Tango Alpha um, over the, uh, overhead the field and then direct Darley Moor. Uh, and a basic service, Golf uh, Papa Yankee. Golf Papa Yankee, basic service it is. East Midlands Q&H is 1016, Squawk 4550. Uh, squawk 4550, Golf uh, Papa Yankee. Uh, and 1016. Can you stand by on the Squawk? Uh, I just uh, seem to have a bit of an issue with my transponder. Um, I'll, uh, I'll come back to you in... One minute. Golf Papa Yankee, Roger, then remain outside of controlled airspace. We'll remain outside of controlled airspace, Golf Papa Yankee. Currently squawking 7,000 or so, just over Leicester, so I'll, uh, I'll mess about with that and then I'll give you a call back. Roger. I've got a problem with Goopy's transponder. The screen has dimmed and I can't see the digits. So I'll try a couple of resets and that seems to have cured the problem. And East Midlands uh, radar, Golf Papa Yankee back with you, squawking 4550. Golf Oscar Papa Yankee, Roger, I do have you identified, it's basic service. Just continue towards the zone boundary and uh, stand by for transit. Continue towards the boundary and stand by for transit, basic service, Golf Papa Yankee. Golf Oscar Oscar Papa Yankee is cleared to transit East Midlands airspace at VFR, not above altitude to 3,000 feet, on the Q&H of 1016, on course for Darley Moor. Golf uh, Oscar Oscar Papa Yankee is cleared to enter and cross uh, the East Midlands control airspace. Current position, uh, direct Darley Moor, uh, not above 3,000 feet, Golf Papa Yankee. Golf Papa Yankee, correct. How many errs? You would think that after all this time our radio calls would be better than this. And, uh, Golf Puppy Yankees in the overhead, continue Darley Moor, 2,000 meter traffic. Golf Puppy Yankee, Roger. Golf Puppy Yankee, you're just clearing East Midlands airspace again. It's a basic service report changing on route. Uh, Golf Puppy Yankee, yeah, uh, just make sure I'm below the controlled airspace and uh, I'm happy to now go uh, en route uh, to call Darley Moor. Uh, about 7,000, Golf Puppy Yankee. Golf Puppy Yankee, that's at the base there, 2,500 feet. Yeah, just uh, descending through 2,400. Thank you, uh, and I'll go to 7,000. So with the controlled airspace now cleared, I start to set up for my join at Darley Moor. Just five miles away, 
and I give their unmonitored frequency a call. Charlie Moore traffic, Golf Oscar, Oscar, Puffy Yankee, Sport Cruiser inbound from the southeast. Uh, currently got five miles to run uh, to the overhead. That's Charlie Moore traffic. The wind is around 10 knots from the west, so I can land on either runway as we have a straight crosswind. And there's no one else on frequency. I choose 01 as it means I won't be flying over the racetrack, and as the circuit is to the west, it means I will have the airfield on my left, which is the side I'm sitting on, making it much easier to see the layout and the main runway. Uh, Darling more traffic, Golf, Oscar, Oscar, Papa Yankee, Sport Cruiser, uh, just approaching the dead side uh, for uh, runway 01, uh, Darling Moor. So circuit height is 1,500 feet. We'll squeeze in between there, not flying over that guy's house. He doesn't want us to. We'll go through that gap there. I manoeuvre the aircraft to avoid the noise sensitive areas below. The airfield sits at almost 600 feet above mean sea level and have a noted circuit height of 800 feet above the airfield. I've worked it out wrongly, I should be at 1400 feet on the QNH but in fact, I'm at 1,500 feet. Oh well, there's no one around, so it's not an issue. Wind's doing not a lot, but it's from the west. Darley Moore traffic, Golf, uh, Puppy, Yankee Sport Cruiser, left hand downwind runway 01, Darley Moore. That looks really tight, that. As I turn from base onto final, the AstroTurf runway looks really skinny and it doesn't actually look wide enough to land on. Darling, more traffic. Golf, uh, Puppy Yankee, final runway 01. Darling, more. That grass looks not uh, I've been advised that the grass runway is not suitable for landing on, but from here it looks lovely compared to the one I'm lined up for. Oh, is this even a runway? Ok, we're down safe, and although a bit muddy, the surface is actually quite decent as I slow the aircraft down. Engine speed. I backtrack the runway and taxi over to the parking area, where my friend Giles is there to meet me. I'm not sure if Terry will put this in, but no one actually appreciates the amount of faff it takes to put more than two cameras on an aeroplane. Yeah. Let me introduce you to Giles. He is a Flexwing Microlight instructor and accomplished paramotor pilot with a long history in aviation. His YouTube channel, Golf Foxtrot 22, is the go-to place for affordable fun flying adventures. If you want to check him out, I'll link his channel in the description and I'll suggest one of his videos at the end. Giles makes me a cup of tea and gives me a tour of the airfield and even gets me to sit in his flying school's trainer aircraft. Ok, it's time for me to go. I climb back into Goopy, line up on the same runway I landed on and head for home. Thank you so much for watching, fly safe and short field out. <laughs>